Hey guys, welcome. I'm Carly from Carly's Creative Clay. On the hour, at the end of the countdown timer on the screen, I'm going to show you how I'm going to make a mountain troll. So I'll see you then.
Hi guys, welcome. I'm Carly from Carly's Creative Clay. I hope you've all had a good week. Um, it's really hot here, so I am melting a bit. I do find clay in hot weather kind of hard because my hands get all very hot, hot. Hi, Frentel. Lovely to have you. First one here. Now, I was looking around because I wanted to do a mountain troll. So, as always, I Google search on Google Images for all different search, search terms. So, troll, mountain troll, um, troll legends, Norwegian trolls, Nordic trolls. And I came up, I came across this picture and I've kind of fallen in love with it. I think it's stunning. Um, this is what it looks like and it's by this guy who I can't pronounce his name so quickly here is his name and the website to see his artwork I think you can buy them there I didn't look closely but I didn't want to not give his name so good old look at it that's it now this isn't the full picture there's like a mountain cliffside on one side where there's a lad standing there looking at the troll and the idea is the troll, the rock troll sat down on an outcrop and has sat there so long he's turning into an island. It, love it. I love it. Isn't it beautiful? So I thought this is a way I can really explore working on rocks but make it interesting for myself. So first off my first thing apart from I love this when I started thinking about how to go about making it that would be a massive slab of clay if I made the whole thing solidly from clay it would be really hard to get that center up to temperature without burning the outside and if your polymer clay doesn't hit the temperature on the packet so for FIMO it's 110 it stays soft so you end up with this hard shell soft center which is really unstable so you're prone for cracks so I went about making an armature for it now because it involved gluing stuff together and drying time I couldn't do it all on the stream so I'm gonna talk you through it right gonna lose the picture for a minute this is the armature that I've made so let's give it a bit of a spin and I'll talk you through what I've done. So, got a little square of chipboard between you and me. I came into some sheets of chipboard because we dismantled a desk and these were the bottoms of all the drawers. It was a cheap IKEA type job. So it had these nice little bits of chipboard. So keep stuff like that, it's useful in the future. So I cut me my little square of chipboard then I've got some tin foil scrunched up not massively tightly but you want to make like a little hockey puck round base now what I did was I rolled over some masking tape so that it's you've got a sticky side top and bottom so it's like a loop everyone knows how to do that I don't need to demonstrate that and stuck that to the bottom of the disc then all around that tape but not actually on the tape I put PVA glue and then wedged that down so that it could start drying then I made the little semicircle lump out of another bit of tin foil and did the same thing little bit of tape and PVA glue and stuck that on then I've covered it in masking tape and that masking tape has wrapped around to the back of the boards. Then I've covered the whole thing in PVA glue and I've weighted it down. I've got these really nice stone tea lights and that sat nicely on the top there. On top of that I stuck a bowl that side up so upside down and then a big paperweight on top of that. So that I'm pushing it all so that it, when it dries, it's drying, sticking firmly to the board. Now, here are your tips. Chipboard goes through the oven at 110 fine. So does masking tape, so does PVA glue. 
not all glues will some will start to burn at that temperature and give off all sorts of horrible smelling stuff so I can tell you this lot does once it's fully dried I then rolled out a sheet of black put it over the back and wrapped it around so that it's starting to go up the sides that's all I've done so far on that so first stage really is to get the water in because I want to make it a kind of island I could just smudge on a load of blue but me being me of course I'm not going to I'm going to do a Skinner blend of two shades um, this is a clay technique I can never remember the woman's first name but a last name Skinner you basically what you're forming is two triangles if you want some of that the original color cut the tro tops off the triangle so anything that is outside of that diagonal line will remain the solid color that you've chose if you put the diagonal going across the whole thing the fade from one color to the other will go across the whole um piece of clay i want the light and dark I'm not going to use a rolling machine because I don't need it that perfect because I'm using water so I want it to be quite a scrappy um, Skinner blend so you're rolling it out and the trick with it is you keep the diagonal um, top to bottom and when you fold over the line up that I'm looking for isn't lining up the top and bottom edges it's making sure that on that on the finished line you still got some that's all blue and some that's all light blue so it's lining up those bits and obviously make sure you don't trap any air in the fold so you push from the middle out to the edges bring it in roll it back out you can do it for a pasta machine you get a much better Skinner blend then you've got to clean a pasta machine so it's laziness that does it for me with I got to choose between my rolling machine and my pasta my rolling pin and my pasta machine but I've also found doing it with a rolling pin you get a much more is it an uneven blend it's more of a jaggedy less crisp line and I'll show you what I mean at the end of this because you'll see it and I think it works really well when you're dealing with nature which is less into very even perfectly straight things right can you see how that dark blue is trying to curve off the end there so if I folded it in line you'd have almost no dark blue on its own so what I'm going to do is I'm folding just over a bit so I'm giving myself some nice dark and there's still enough of that light on that side that I want and again air needs to be pushed out so you seal it from the middle out to the edge and you're going to find your clay wants to spread that way instead of that way so you just got to keep pushing it back in line periodically and it's as simple as doing a few rolls like this now if you don't want to do a Skinner blend you can just put the two different colored clays on and then just use your finger to smudge them but that gives a completely different effect to what I'm trying for so I think this is worth the effort come on you right now whilst I'm doing this I'll talk you through some of the plans I've got for my full model once I've got the water in I'm going to do 
the rocks around the base that he's sitting on and around his back then after that then I put in the actual body features the arms legs and head and then I bake it and I'm gonna actually try something which is completely new for me I'm gonna go over it with some acrylic and water in a dark brown and that'll wash into all the little cracks and crevices and make them look a lot more dark so they stand out then you can wipe down the surface area so that it's not all uniformly gone a dark brown basically if you do it on raw clay you're more likely to have trouble wiping it off because obviously raw clay is sticky but if you're gonna do any sort of acrylic paint on your clay piece you're gonna have to seal it afterwards with a varnish or two-part epoxy or something like that to keep it on because where it's a plastic it's pretty much waterproof it's if you look at polymer clay that's baked under a microscope you will see pitting that's why it's not really really seen as a food grade product but it's not pitting enough to actually absorb stuff no it's not anywhere near as good as paper or stuff like that so it will hold it it's not completely waterproof but you're gonna have to seal it in it is a bit of work doing this but I find it so worthwhile I remember the first Skinner blend I did I thought was going terribly wrong because it does look scruffy until the very last moment and then it all goes together like magic that and cane work are two of the things that I think are the most magical things you can do in your clay um, cane work is where you make a big picture with your clay and then you squeeze along the sides and it goes up like rock sweet keeping the image all the way through and if you're a member of the British Polymer Clay Guild at the moment they are doing their monthly competition and this month it's all about doing canes so I'm going to show do a little straight to YouTube video of the simplest cane that I can do that is actually really impressive to look at now halfway through can you see this streak that's come in there it looks really streaky and patchy you're not going wrong that's right the back's gonna look even worse it's not gonna look level that's entirely correct you have not messed it up just keep going with it a few more passes and you'll find that you end up with a really smooth blending whoever came well dear miss skinner coming up with this she was a genius because before they used to stack blocks and do some real long complicated maths that i've heard about looked at it and went ah uh, no no i'm better at triangles I'm going to say one last pass on this and it's going to be good enough for my purposes because I want a more patchy fade in so it looks more like water should the problem with being a cat owner and into clay is a never ending real issue they're not even allowed in here they're certainly not allowed up on my desk there we go gone that one hair always makes it in and my cat i think she's part angora rabbit the amount of hair she molts i brush her three times a day she's not even a long hair ridiculous right so can you see we've now got 
don't know if the camera is focusing well enough but can you see we've now got a blend from the darker blue into the light yeah that's what we're aiming for now the dark blue is the deep water so we'll be up around the edge and the lighter blue I want nearer the island so now I'm going to need to shape this into more of what I actually want so first off let's cut it into four so then I can do it in four bits so like that whoop like that move these two out the way and they don't have to be really even if you see I'm not measuring anything really well but we're now going to need to get this so that it's going to fit the space there so it's going to be pretty thin what I'm doing is I'm literally going to just start to work it so that it fits in that space so this needs to come whoop, make sure you don't consultina so using a glass desk really does help you change the shape of your clay so like this we need more out that way more out that way can you see how much I've changed its shape already just by working it and you'd think there's not enough clay here but there really is you're just going to have to get it out thin and the reason why I'm not rolling it with a rolling pin that I'm pinching it is because I find when you want to get the clay very thin with a rolling pin it tends to just stick and that's not what you want so let's bring this blue in around like that like this and I want to overlap that black so let's pull you up the good thing about water is if it's not even it still looks fine so like that so far there we go whoop you tore but we can tidy all that up in a second let's bring that over like that there we go right what do you reckon and I want to actually put it so that it looks like it's running down the edge a little so I'm just making some nice little dribbly looking over flows on that black like so see that's what I wanted to aim at let's bring some more down there and this is why I went for a chipboard base instead of just solid clay is so that I had the firmness to be able to work this all in like so so that's my first bit of blue in I think it's looking pretty good so far now again we need to turn this into a completely different shape again so thinner and wider and it's a perfect demonstration of how you can really make your clay work for you if it's in the wrong proportions of colours the flexibility of it means that you really can just change it around make it lay where you want and don't worry if you think you've got it into the wrong shape you can always move it into a new one you can extend like I've shown you pinching out and if you go oops that's too wide just push it back on itself what you need to avoid 
is that sort of zigzag crinkle where it folds up and you do that on itself that's where glass really helps really does and it amazes me how I can make something that I didn't think is going to fit fit exactly where I want it to I'm sure you probably can do that with painting but I've had so little success with painting this really is not this is really the best medium for me I think so again little over splashes and I'm gonna pinch this so that it's all the way out to the edge there so let's do a few crinkles I will hold it up and show you in a second once I've got it laying where I want so I now need to bring that dark blue round over here so it's joining hi I am making a troll island it's kind of a troll but he's in the shape of an island so I'm just getting the water in like so oops I will show you what I'm doing and literally all I'm doing is pinching up so that it's not so smooth it looks more like it's flowing over the edges a little like that now that join thank you that join I'm just going to smudge it in so it looks like one solid piece like that now what I was saying about how you can smudge blend two colours you just bring the dark and do that can you see how you're still blending the two blues in a bit more hi yep and so I'm just going to do that just so that it's not such a clean edge so it looks more like the blues of water like so let's get rid of that last crease over here and with that small bit of blue we've done half the island which is cool because when I first rolled it out I was questioning whether there was enough and there is so we got that left to do all that half but you saw it all worked before we'll get it to fit so pushing 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 to start bringing it out sideways it was very intimidating when I first started trying to move colors around on clay like this because you don't think you should be able to you naturally feel like this just is never going to work and it is really surprising how much it actually does work really don't you think yeah, yeah. right where are we at i'd say that's good but we yeah, need I to get that yeah yeah jamie's opening lemonade so if you hear a big fizz that's what that is it's so hot here and I saw the weather forecast and it says it's going to get hotter which most people love hot weather but it actually makes me really ill I get very unwell in it so I'm not enjoying that bit of new news that we're going to end up with more hot temperatures to come but I've got for my bedroom one of those fans that they use in gyms and sports centers it's totally the way to go okay it's big I get it it takes up a lot of room but oh it's a lifesaver really is don't know what you're leaning on there mate but my screen's gone all weird sorry about that uh, I must have lent on the mouse I'm sorry there we go we did have 
a new camera to try we thought it was going to be good the specs sounded amazing and it literally was worse than the camera we we're already using so no this weekend and tomorrow is supposed to be absolutely burning which is just not what I wanted to hear oh well it'll be winter soon everyone when I'm out in public people British people expect other Brits to complain about the winter and rain and snow and all that not me never that's my favorite time of year I love it there will be no complaints heard from this side even if it's freezing because if it's freezing you can wrap up warm it's nice when it's boiling you just can't strip everything off enough and you can't live in water so I'm thinking of getting some kind of air con unit I can't find an effective one in my budget yeah that's the problem that's why we went for big fans rather than aircon although our house has got inbuilt aircon in some of the rooms but it came that way the guy who built the house that I live in built it for him and his family to live in and apparently when he just got close to finishing it the woman said his wife said I want a bungalow I'm not sure whether that would be divorce territory for me whether it had been because he spent years on it years and it's like you couldn't have told me sooner that you don't want the dream house that I'm building but no they they sold it up to us I mean it's good it's got big baths which is amazing but underfloor heating is a pain in the butt I'd much rather he just did radiators so those thinking about actually going there and doing underfloor heating it's it is just more trouble than it's worth I warn you yeah it's the big worry I've got with this whole thing about the earth's going to heat up because I can't take the temperature at the moment and I know you're meant to get used to it what was it eight weeks of a certain temperature and yeah, you but it has to be a, but it has to be a constant eight weeks. eight weeks so yeah isn't it gorgeous I love the color schemes one of my favorite dragon t-shirts is my autumn dragon I've always worked in the browns oranges yellows golds that sort of thing it's just pretty and if you see it that's one of the things about this model that has that attracted me to that picture was that the actual foliage is quite brown shades of green rather than full on green greens so we got our water on what do you think now I know I've got a few smudges of dark spots there but that's fine we'll just cover them up with rocks but if you had any rubbing alcohol you can always just use that to make it look more like what you want What's going to be the first bit? so first bit oh itchy oh, nose lovely. thank you first bit is gonna be to get a general covering of brown now the rock shade of brown i made here is brown black and white if you add yellows you stay in those warm brown tones if you add whites you get this almost you know the sort of pale color that we got going on here it i find white to brown always gets it looking more stone like now let's clean the blue off my blade the the normal shade of brown that um FIMO does in a large block which is chocolate I'll get some out because I've got some here 
is this and it kind of doesn't look so brown so if you add black to it on its own let's see have i got any brown and black mix nope dang it Right, brown and black makes a nice dark brown but then you add white back in and it goes to a grey colour because how they've made their brown is with yellows okay that makes sense now how to make a rocky surface easily from clay is the question and I've had a few ideas on this I think first off I'm going to do a bit of an even covering just so I've got some to start working on and I'm not going to smooth in all my joints I'm just going to take some random clay and start to stick it on it is I conditioned it yesterday and it's pretty warm but instead of tearing I'm pulling across because it brings these nice sort of interestingly kind of rocky type lines jagged edges. jagged edges that's a good one and instead of laying them on top of each other flat I am doing nice little lips and stuff like that you just got to make sure you haven't got any white showing and that it's all pushed on firmly I am aware it's still very smooth we've got a lot of adding to do on this which is entirely true so tuck a bit under there wherever you see this is the good thing about masking tape is where it's white it shows up so you can see if you've not put enough clay on anything also you want to cover your foil unless you've um, done a whole lot of rubbing of it onto a glass surface so that it is entirely smooth where you've got jaggedy points of masking tape the clay covers that and it doesn't stick through because it's quite soft a jagged point of foil where it's metal the moment you push clay on it it just comes straight through and it looks kind of rubbish really so it's worth a coat of masking tape especially since you can get the stuff at the pound shop but if you're going to be clean straight away as soon as you masking tape you don't need the layer of PVA glue if you are actually going to leave it a day especially overnight you will wake up the next morning come back to your model and find all your tapes peeled off because by its nature masking tape is meant to have kind of rubbish glue it's meant to be an easy peel off and it's it sticks up to its name especially the pound shop you stuff the inside the glue. oh outside stick it all down with the masking tape and then just coat the whole outside with pva glue and then leave it overnight to dry don't try add your clay to wet PVA glue it doesn't go well I've never done it I just know well enough to know that that's just not gonna work you're just gonna end up with clay that's got PVA in it and I'm not even sure how that will bake because I'm sure it will do something to the reaction I know putting too much baby oil in your clay can mess it up structurally let alone PVA which I think has quite a high water content if I'm not mistaken and polymer clay hates water it is not traditional ceramic clay it is in the plastics family and you try and soften it with water you basically ruined your clay so what you soften it with is either a really tiny 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 as sparing as you possibly can bit of baby oil or what I use liquid polymer clay and that you haven't got to be so sparing with because it's the same chemical composite as 
the clay you're starting out with. That make all sense? It was funny though, a friend of mine who I've known for many years decided to get some polymer clay so he could have a go at sculpting something. He's messaging me going, this is not like ceramic clay, it's, it's firm, I can't get it to smush. Because ceramic clays are like, almost like a mousse when you work with them, they're, they're beautiful very very soft that's why it's so messy this stuff is firm even the soft which if you're starting out with polymer clay I really advise you go for their soft range first till you get your hand strength back up I didn't I was just a glutton for punishment because I needed to rehab my hands so don't do what I did because it's kind of the hard way around of doing it but you will get there where you're used to working with firmer clay and it's so worth it to not have to spend the money to run a kiln it's so expensive and this stuff does not explode in the oven like ceramics can do if you've got a small bit of air in it this just leaves you with an air bubble that is structurally compromising your work which sounds just as bad but actually you can fix that far easier than you can something that's violently exploded right we're getting there on this as a start it's looking more craggy although it is still very one-dimensional we will i will be addressing that and just giving myself a nice first base and if I can make this look really successful something I've wanted to do at some wins is do the original fairy castle on a cliff top and I've got I want to get a glass collage and make tiny dragons then hang them from fishing wire so it's see-through from the top of the colosh over the top of the dragons that would be awesome that's a project on my to-do list but it's surprising how expensive glass coloshes are you know the little glass domes like in sleeping beauty the what the rose was under those things not cheap really not cheap now do remember if you go really thin with this you're not going to have as much structural integrity as if you use a bit thicker like clay. It sounds amazing. Yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to probably drive me up the wall trying to get the dragons in place. And the thing I tend to do when I start making houses is I want to, I'm a builder's daughter, so I end up wanting to make tiny bricks and actually brick lay up a house instead of just doing a flat bit of clay and carving brick lines into it. Got to get out the habit. I mean, I suppose my dad would be proud of me, but yeah, I made a log cabin like that for a friend of mine in America. She wanted a box and I did the whole each log individually I made um, a wood effect floor if you I think it's on a previous video I've done wood effect I'll have a look through if I haven't I'll I've got to make a video of that because you can do fake wood both what what colosses that would be my guess. Really? If you go on eBay, they want like 30 quid for one. Awesome. Then that also means going to Ikea. Yeah, I don't they have a minimum order. The whole thing about Ikea for me is I go in for one thing and I come out with about two trolleys load. And, you know right so we're kind of covered now what i want to do 
is I've got some tin foil scrunched up. You remember I told you that tin foil scrunched up pokes through clay really well. I'm going to use its most annoying feature to work for me and give me some more rock texturing. So what I'm going to do is start what glass colossus i will have a yak with you ab about this after the stream because if they're of the right specs for me then i will definitely be wanting more than one i'll give you some money up front for that because they just make a wonderful display for pieces i think it just turns your statue into something a lot more classy right can you see what I've, what's happened now that i've stabbed it with some tinfoil i think you're going to need to do some focus in here look at all that texture that is given do you see That's having there you go yep yeah, different bits of so different shapes and you're just going to go around and take your stress out on your clay piece because if it digs in too deep and you start to see white you just take a pinch of clay and patch it back in so this is a really good one to do after you've had a frustrating day on the phone trying to sort out something annoying with some call center somewhere just come round and dig at your piece you can also use tools like different ones just to gouge in some cracks and crevices lift up some of the clay to make it look more sticking up it's all sorts of things you can do and most of them are really nicely stress relieving which is useful But you want to try and make it so that it's not one flat piece and it's worth taking time on this now i would advise baking this before you go on to doing greenery but do the rest of the actual main part of the guy before we bake it and I also want to come to this water and put some texture in that in a bit but I'm going to do the rock surface first the other thing that I find really good for water is liquid polymer clay especially if you've added a bit of mica powder to it because it doesn't bake completely clear especially the FIMO one and unfortunately it does have a bit of a yellow tint the translucent liquid Sculpey break bakes a lot more clear than the FIMO one does but it does bake at a higher temperature it's at Sculpey temperatures not FIMO temperatures so what I tend to do is I use my liquid FIMO but I add a bit of um, ice blue mica powder into it. Mica powder it's a bit like very fine glitter but um, mica is a mineral that is like little flat discs um, if you looked at them under a microscope. So they don't look like discs to your eyes to your eyes they look it looks just like a very fine powder but they're little flat discs and the flat side is very very shiny like metal and it comes dyed in many different colors and it goes through the oven absolutely fine the um so it's used in a lot of projects it is a kind of rock yeah um pretty cheap the thing that really gets to me is i see videos of people using it without 
any sort of dust mask on it is a mineral and you breathe it in your lungs can't process that and it's okay in small amounts but if you're using it regularly wear a dust mask or do also do what i do i get you can buy vanilla essence in a powder they call it vanilla powder yeah get some of that and mix a quarter of a teaspoon of vanilla powder into your micro your mica powder and what you'll find then is you suddenly got a smell for your mica powder so if it's in the air you can smell it even if you can't see it you can only really see it once the light beam hits on it and we've had that haven't we james where i'm busily micro in a way and you come in you're like it looks like aladdin's freaking cave in here every light beam through the window was absolutely glittering and wasn't quite that eloquent, but yeah. no yeah that was the safe for youtube version and i had a dust mask on the cat didn't the rest of the room didn't so yeah make sure you're being aware that that is a thing with mica powder make sure that you're aware of who you're using it around and it's okay it does settle and you can just hoover it and dust it off but it does kick up in the air surprisingly easy but i'm kind of addicted to the stuff i love a bit of sparkle on things i'm still trying to nag people in my household to get in a custom paint job on a car which involves lots of glitter everyone's saying it's a too expensive because apparently it's like seven grand far too expensive just for a coat of paint but like, it's so pretty so pretty and my brother-in-law bought me holographic glitter for christmas one year and for a good couple of months after that every bit of clay item i was making was covered in glitter even now i still got pots of the stuff but i'm trying to be responsible with it sweep it into a bin do not um use a cloth to wipe down the sides and it ends up in a water table because it's not good these sorts of things right i know i've been waffling on but i'll show you where i got on with this look at this bring it up close do you see what i mean how foil just turns it into looking like rock it's awesome once i've got some of these lighter indents on i'm then going to come and attack it with some tools to make it less of a singular flat piece and texturing on your clay i used to when i started out it wasn't something i was bothered with at all but it hides a lot of stuff it hides your dust and your fingerprints and all that it also makes your work look more interesting it's i think it's worth the effort and also it's a great stress reliever like i said come on paper stop sticking <sighs> the other thing i'm looking forward to is a lower pollen count I was saying to my family, there's all these people that have real issues about people's sexual habits. No one complains about the plants and that really is in your face and causes your life problems. Be happy for gay people, have issue for plant sex. Pollen ruins your day. I've never found what people get up to in their bedroom ruins my world 
never have plants yeah keep your private life private and not something that i've got to breathe in as and making his eyes water and sneeze and all that right so now to come in and just do some random hack jobs to make this look a little less smooth and you can use anything you find around the house with a point on it i mean i've got tools and they do come as cheap sets but when i started out I did not have tools I had to get creative so my mother-in-law's knitting needles got yoinked and coat hangers especially the metal ones they're brilliant for making tools out of it's amazing what you find especially in the kitchen and there are a lot of people who say you can't if you've used a tool on polymer clay it can't go back into the kitchen that's not true literally not they're mistaking the fact that um their clay has a, sl a slight pitting to it so it's not really food safe as me meaning it's toxic it's not toxic like literally it's not toxic don't taste of anything but it never killed me yet so yeah go have fun repurpose all your household items into tools for your clay you have no problems just wash them up after so I'm coming in I'm really getting some texture in my clay blob and it's worth it I think even though I'm gonna come in and put bushes over and some of these little bits that are falling off into the water I'm leaving and others I'm just bringing up to the edge so that it looks like little rock outcrops on the island which happens you get little landslides so what do you reckon so far i'm almost there for texturing i think what you'll find is you're going to push them back into invisibility again because you're using pressure that's why i did the fine texturing before i came over and dug in like this it for a blob of brown clay it it's looking rockish isn't it and if you want to come in you have a strategy for the direction you make cuts i'm not i'm literally just coming in and doing that just swirling around in different directions then i'm going to come and get some texture up a bit and stick on little lumps so that it's not all that one surface bigger boulders basically put a few jaggedy points sticking around now when i'm doing that i'm not going to put on that front side that i'm going to build up the face and the legs and all that on just around the back so it doesn't look like such a smooth singular lump of rock see see what I mean I've got bigger bumps in there now when you do that make sure they're firmly attached though right the other thing I want to do is shape this a little more interestingly like that and do a nice little rock out crop a few tiny points around it looks 
more like nature you can come in and stipple up some of that as well if you want let's just put a few there like that and this has a dual effect of making sure it's all stuck down properly and texturing it that'll do I think that's a good start up yeah so we still got that little seat lip I know it doesn't look it but let's hold it on its side and you'll see what I mean yeah so we can still build into that the rest of our guy oh my nose is so itchy are you gonna dress the rock with um i'm gonna dress it with once, he's, he's built. once i've built the basic shapes of him and i got him how i like then I'm going to come in with some green and I'm doing moss and trees and all that sort of stuff. This is my green palette. So if you can see, it's quite a lot of green browns. Now we will go through all my mixes when I get to that stage. But what I want to do is once I've got the rock on, including him, I want to bake it because then I want to colour wash it in dark brown to get in those gaps before I do the green because the green you don't want dark colour washes on oh that was the other thing I was going to do some waves so that the water looks more like water so what can I use should have got that ready I've got a really nice wave stencil sheet what you get Fimo sells these things called texture sheets and they're really cheap there's one that makes very good waves you've got bricks you've got scales all sorts of things like that here we go that's a good wave one so what I tend to do is cross between these two so again brickwork fish scales let's see can you see that properly fish gals all sorts like that um little cubes little dots and they do packs and packs of these and they're really cheap the other thing you can use is um packaging like what your cates come in all that plastic just um make sure that the clay is not going to melt it so put a bit of clay on it overnight and if it hasn't melted then you know you can use it with your clay so all I'm doing is I'm going to push it into place where I want and you could have done this before you put the brown mountain on now I use this it's a metal soap what they use this for is um, you wash it hands with it when you've got garlic or onion on your hands and it reacts with the chemicals in it and neutralizes it but they're about two pounds still soap but what I like is that it's got all these nice curves that you can burnish your pattern in with lift that off and already whoop pick it up this way can you see the wave design there now I'm going to have to do it kind of manually around that rock so I should have really done this before that if you want a more natural wave there is this sort of liney affair that they've got going on but I think I'm gonna just go for this one for now just come in and rub over that there we go and it's pretty quick to do I may at some point I haven't decided I might make a little rowing boat to go in this water just so that it gives a size comparison for the rest of the island 
to make the guy look bigger interesting thing i found because i've done some research on trolls because you know me i like to read up on the cryptids that i'm making um trolls didn't start out being huge the mythology in later years puts them as a very big sort of gigantic animal but the earliest reports of trolls they basically sounded like bigfoots size of a human a lot stronger her quite hairy lives in woodlands weird how often that one comes up as a reported description of a cryptid but over time size always seems to get increased when you come across something that isn't a definitely known size even when people go fishing and they those fish are known to science you still get people oh yeah it was 10 foot you're like a cod really we like to make stuff up for those extra waves that i couldn't get in i'm going to come in with my ball tool and just put them back in as little sway like swirly marks so doesn't matter if your texture tool doesn't get in you can always re you can come in afterwards and add basically and again it took me a minute or two just to put these in and I'll show you I think it was it has made the water look far more attractive or it does to me anyway my waves are nowhere near as uniform as the sheet is though so I may go over afterwards just to ununiform some of these swells so it blends in with what I'm doing a bit more whoops there we go right let's hold this up can you see all around the water now has movement to it and when you come in around where it's hitting the rock with i'll just do it on the back edge get your liquid clay mix it with some foil and i put it on a small bit just to show you and i'll take it off because i'm going to do that off of camera because it is seriously messy but what you're basically doing is you get your liquid clay on Liz said uh, they kept losing their YouTube feed. oh I really i don't know why it's not falling out on our side we've got, um, we've got full bandwidth so i put a lip on and then I come in and just move it so that it's coming up the side. I know it looks a bit see-through there. That's why I put in the mica powder normally. But it just gives you that sense of a wave breaking. Which you don't get so much from the flat blue liquid polymer clay has all sorts of interesting was it all falling over for all of you Eeps, i'm sorry i don't know why we it's showing green all over our monitors the internet so annoying right we're going to come in i'm going to do the legs first so we need two sticks the same sort of size as each yeah, other weird i don't know i can't say it's on the servers i think 
Yeah. We're going for two that are roughly the same size. You can either come in with two sticks like this and then push them in so you don't get to see the waist so much or if you wanted to really do a waistline from it where he's going to be hunched over I don't really need to if you want to do a waistline on your trousers you get your ball and you pinch out two sticks like so and then bring them down and as you can see you got more of a top for your trouser then what I want to do though is just two leg sticks because he's going to have a beard out of moss coming down the front so do you want to see the picture again just to remind you what I'm doing the so quick yep. flashy if you can you see he's got all that moss going down as a beard so I don't really need to show the tops of the legs okay that's fine you want your legs the same width as each other so that looks about right and a sneaky makers trick for you here I could clean that stain off I'm just gonna make that this side that goes stuck get stuck down know when to fight your clay and get it all perfect and when it's actually not needed now looking at that I want it a little shorter possibly so that I've got actually no that would do I have got room for feet there so I want to go in like that so we've got a pair of legs in we can if you want actually I think I will put knees in there just by pinching halfway along like so to so do that yeah that looks better putting knees in it just pinch where you want the knee and if it's you create too much of a bump just tap it back down again so like that that looks better to me yeah then we're going to come in with some feet right and again it's better to make up too much of the colour that you want than it is to try and mix up more of the same shade at a later date because it's really 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 hard unless you've kept measurements of weights of the different colour that you've added together you'll find it hard to mix up the same colour twice and where I just do it by eye I find it seriously difficult right we're on two balls he's got feet wrapping around his feet like bandages I'm gonna keep put my one barefoot I think now again know what to spend your time on and what to not bother there is no point spending time on the underside of that foot because you're not going to see it yeah so we want to get a heel in like that and then we're going to start putting some toes in now what I tend to do is first cut them out some giant legends have them as six toed I think I'm going to do mine as a five one two three four five like that now at the moment we've got some seriously square ends so what I do is I tend to pull them apart shape them how I want and then put them back next to each other 
I uh, know it's fiddly especially if you've got chunky hands like what I've got but it's the only way I think you can do it I mean you can make them and add them on and then join them in but I've found for me they've been less structurally strong and more likely to snap off when I've done that if that makes sense and remember you've got toe length to bear in mind some toes are longer than other toes so I want to make quite a curved foot like so and this is going to be the big toe so you want it down a bit and sticking out to the side slightly more than that what do you reckon whoops you can see the background there yeah now it's always easier to make your first foot than your second your second's got a mirror let's put a few toenails on these just do some little dips like that and again you can instead of having dipped toenails stick toenails on the top I tend to just go for these sort of dipped looks so now the, the difficult bit doing the second foot and remember you are mirroring each other so the big toe has to be on this inside because it's on so on the right side this one so we need it on the left side on this one that sounds about right shape out a hill and again I've not gone for very human feet they're a lot more flat footed than a human is because a human seems to have a foot arch and a hill ball and then that little nice C shape just below the toes and that means you don't end up with a flat foot like that you end up with this sort of arch look well you you know you looked at your feet but I'm going for a very very simplified foot like so so one two three four gotta be cut out one two three four blade out the way so has any of you guys found that all this quarantine has actually made you do more art projects it seems online in the clay groups I'm at it's been really mixed some people have found this a very productive creative time and others have really not I've actually been less productive on my claying than I would have been beforehand I'm not I'm generally housebound most of the time so I haven't had that as a big shock to me but I have had the stress of having no ability to go out and I've been isolating a lot longer than probably some of you most of you are back out in the world well I'm not I really don't want to risk it it has some really bad ramifications for me and my family if we catch this so until those numbers are well down I am staying put and I'm keeping my Etsy shop shut unfortunately because not good for my mental health have I done exactly what I said I shouldn't do? Ed, yeah, totally did. Ed Bennett on Facebook said, I think that's two left feet. It is two left feet. I do it all the time. It's where I'm dyslexic. Right, flip it over and just put toes on the other side. See? And now it's not. Sneaky. Sneaky. I'm so dumb. The amount not of times I have two of the same hand or foot is ridiculous. 
that's just the way my brain works i think right two feet like that there we go now we're going to tuck these up underneath like so and make sure they're firmly secured to those ankles and they're firmly secured to the bottom so like that i think liz thinks it's funny that you've got two left feet so you can kind of oh it i great. do it so often i've even one of my models i'm not gonna say which because everyone has loved it and no one has spotted it has actually got two hands the same left hands, left hands. two left hands and yeah it's baked in such a way that i am not going to be able to fix that i am just going to have to lean into it and <laughs> hope no one notices or they notice it and think okay that's fine I hope no one else notices. well it's it's still up for sale it's very prominent so yeah, yeah people are going to notice either they want it or they don't i still love it <laughs> right now we've got decisions to make shall we texture those legs in i think we should because he's still meant to be made of stone just not as deeply as i've done for the rest of the rock and the other thing i would say when you're using foil to texture don't just use exactly the same bit because you'll end up with a uniform mark turn your clay or turn your tin foil around come in at different angles with different sides of it maybe even have a couple of bits of foil to do this with but I'll give you an idea. I'm just going to do the one leg. I'll do the other leg off camera once I get that far. But I'll just show you the difference between them textured in and left smooth. And again, you can leave them smooth. It would look fine. It's a design decision. But this is it textured in let's hold it up come on you like that it looks a little more rocky yeah so we're using this main bit as the abdomen so the arms are going to come out here and we're going to slouch your head over the knees yeah, ben, it says, if you say anything about one's abnormalities it's breaking the law these days yeah <sighs> no it's not we've all got abnormalities it's just part of life i know i've got lots of them right so arms roughly the same amount as you've got for your legs now do remember you've got to get out of your clay hands and head so i'm gonna go for that for my hands I think that I'd do it right bit less on that there we go right and this is gonna look a lot less like a mountain before we get the greenery on it once we've got some greenery going on it will look a lot more like it but it's coming along at a nice little trot, I think. Ed Bennett says two hands the same as okay. Yeah. But again, if you want to put a bit more backstory in your character, you can do things like he's missing a f hand or a finger or a toe or a body part. Some people really make up a whole lot of backstory for their characters and include all that sort of stuff in it i tend to especially with dragons do things like ripped wings so it's easy to make your first yeah, ben, it says very 
your first few models as um Edwin it said what? Very woke. Huh. Right. Making them perfect but you don't have to. It's character. Now I'm gonna go for quite pencil straight arms. I'm not gonna put a lot of muscles on him. But you want the top of the arm wider than the bottom so you're going for almost like a bowling pin shape but less dramatic does that make sense so like that then we're going to bend at the elbow kind of like we did with the knee but do less of a bump more of a point so like that there we go and that's going to come in like so same on the other side you can just fold but can you see how you get that very rounded bow you don't get the nice point of an elbow pinching it in is kind of important if you're going to do a bent arm like that there you go like so And again, I'm just making sure it's joined well to the rocks at that top point. And we're going to get some hands in there. So, long, 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 long. How long have we been going on for? Hour and 20. Shall I do the hands and leave it at that and do the head next week? Or are we going yeah i think i think the head's going to take quite a bit of time because heads do so i might do the hands and then do the i'm going to do the head next week and then the week after i do the greenery now hands no because you need to bake it so i can do the i need to bake it so i can do the color wash hands we're gonna it's different to feet we need to do thumb first so you pinch out nice little thumb like that it almost looks like a potions bottle kind of shape yeah then you come up one side and you turn that into a mitten shape yes, that sounds good brilliant so yeah you can see i've done a lot of planning on this i didn't do a lot of planning i just saw a picture and went oh that's so pretty and he's got a lot of other troll pictures on his website so i totally advise taking a look at that because he's got some really good stuff now again if we're going to see the palms then there's a whole lot more shaping that you're going to need to do but i'm not I'm going to have the, the hands together on the lap so you're not going to see the underside. So this means I ain't got to spend ages sculpting it. When I first started playing, the amount of time I would spend doing work on areas that then were going to get completely covered up. I was like, and yeah you enjoy your project but not so much that you want to do work that literally is pointless so some planning is useful although look at me i'm able to do it without much planning at all right so again two mittens opposite sides to each other and where i'm not going to spread the fingers i'm actually gonna at just draw lines in and what I like to do with that is use my felting needle because the felting needle it's thinner than your normal um, pointy needle you get for clay work and it's actually if you look at it it's a triangle shape so you've got 
instead of it being fully round you've got these little flat edges that really are good at carving support it with your hands and don't forget the bottoms lay in an arch so you don't want them finishing in a line so one two and then this one slightly longer see arch shaped do you see what I mean the ends stop in a little semicircle now other rookie mistake bring that curve over the tip like so because your fingers go all the way around see that looks far more like a hand yeah then you can come in with fingernails so this side up one two and slightly longer three it's a lot easier doing it this way than it is cutting your fingers out individually with blades like I did the toes there we are kind of short fingers I might bring them down a bit more that looks more like it it's better to start out too short and then bring them up than it is to have to rub them all out that's all I'm saying and again you can come in and put knuckles in on it all but I'm not going to just because it's a lot of work and I want to leave it purposely kind of scrappy so in order to get that thumb up in place you just pinch down the side like that so bring it up and pinch and then you've got your hands so if you're going to leave them sticking out across the lap so if I was going to add that in like that where it was just sitting not on anything else I would use wire to put through that wrist just to reassure it up but where I want to first off join the fingers like that fold them over into that position like so that's going to help support it and so are the knees you just got to make sure you've got it all pushed on in the right place and firmly attached there we are right hands what do you reckon let's bring it up to the camera so we're like that whoop so I've got to come in stipple it all in and I'm only going to stipple in the arms and the legs not the hands and the feet I'm going to leave them smooth what I might also do is come in with ball tools and just put on a few tendons down between the toes just by doing that some little fine markings come in put in some fingernails by supporting the underside and marking them into place so just make sure you support anywhere that you're going to put pressure so that it holds into the same place you want them to there we are so we've all got fingernails on that now let's put a few toe ridge in there right so that's where I would be with the hands and legs all I'm going to do off camera is stipple in the arms and the legs themselves and I'll leave it there we'll come in next week we'll do the head <coughs> then we'll 
<coughs> sorry dust in my lungs then I'll bake it at that stage so I'm gonna leave it unbaked for now okay hope you all have a really good week and we'll get back to this next Wednesday same time okay have a great week everyone like follow subscribe all the good stuff like that and it was great having all your company okay <laughs>